um, the date, you know, you would put, you know, today's date or the date that you're, you're working on. Um, the start time, look at your watch, you started at 3.05, so you put 3.05. Then when you get back, you put your end time, you know, like 4.05. Observer, you know, that's just you. And the scribe, if there's two of them, put their name there. Um, now, I don't like to use this when I'm out on the trail because trying to find all these names is pretty hard. So I just take a blank sheet of paper and I write down the date, the time, the end time, and then there's some more. I'll turn it over. And they also, they want to know what the temperature is. So if you have a cell phone, just go to Fort Wayne weather and the beginning and the end. So, you know, like it was 75 when you started and then when you stopped, you know, it was 80. So you put both those, the beginning and stop time. The wind, uh, the beginning wind and the end wind. Now, if you look at the box just below it, you're going to write in one of those words, calm, relatively still, moderately windy, windy, or very windy. You probably shouldn't even be out there if it's very windy, because mm -hmm. you're not going to get very yeah, windy. Right. Yeah. Um, and then that arrow leads you down to the bottom, because a lot of people have trouble, well, how do I know <laughs> if it's three miles per hour right now? <laughs> and so this might help you. If, if smoke is going straight up, of course you may not see much smoke, but if, if, if it's going straight up, it's calm. And if there's no wind blowing, it's calm. Yeah, that, that would make sense. <laughs> Relatively still, it barely moves the leaves. Moderately windy, the leaves are rustling and you can feel the wind on your face. If it's windy, the leaves and twigs are in motion, moving, and very windy. Uh, it's flying up and it's dusty. It's really bad. So that might help you decide to fill what you're going to put in there. Uh, the sky, uh, again, you do what the sky is at the beginning and what the sky was at the end. And uh, if it's clear, it can have just a couple clouds floating. If it's mostly clear, uh, up to a third of the sky could be blue. Partly cloudy, that's about half clouds and half blue sky. Mostly cloudy, you know, 70 to 80 percent. Most of it is 20 percent is not cloudy. Overcast, 90 to 100 percent. And then they also have hazy, which, which it is. I hear that we should have today. Yeah. So yeah, and that is from the fourth part probably. Yeah. So that would be what you put in there. So, uh, I just, before I go out, I, I just have a blank sheet and I write these things down, start, stop, wind, temperature, sky, and then I fill it in on my sheet rather than trying to do it on this little paper <laughs> with all those strange boxes. Now, when it comes to, you see your first butterfly, um, the, uh, um, you can use hash marks because like, so, well, let's see, the, the uh, cabbage butterfly, you're going to see a lot of those, those white ones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you might be an A and you put one, two, three, four, five, you know, hash marks. Mm -hmm. um, and what I do on my special sheet of paper, I just write down uh, cabbage and then I put my hash marks on my worksheet over here. Instead of trying to find where's the cabbage on here, you know, yes. and every time I have to find it. Find it. Solid. Now the A, B, C, D, E, and F, that's talking about different land uh, terrain, different uh, uh, ecosystems. So, say you were um, here, like go to the Boy Scout office if you were there, and where A was at the bottom left. And say you were going from A down to trail, uh, to the bottom there where trail one is. 
that's all mostly grassy. Um, so that would be grasslands. And so I would call anything in there, I would put in A. But now, if I go in the bottom there, one, I've got Grand McCulloch on one side and I've got that pond on the other. So that one would go in B, wetland. And some people have, you know, three or more. <laughs> I hope you don't have that many. Uh, but uh, uh, you might have a woods, and so you'd say wooded area for C. Uh, that's another good reason to look at your site because you need to know is it grass, wetland, woods, and. Uh, uh, and these letters correspond with. No, no, no. Those, they they you you, you decide that. You, oh, if you okay. say that's, A is going to be grasses, then it's always going to be grasses. And when you get halfway through, if you uh, come back into a grass area, then you would put that in A. Any butterflies you mark would go in A. Uh, you don't have to start another letter if it's the same type of, of, of uh, ecosystem okay. or environment site. Um, so if we wanted to even put like a wood, wetland, we can even label it. Right, and they will ask you when you fill out your application, they'll ask you, you know, what type of uh, ecosystem are you in? And if you're lucky, you know, maybe the whole thing will be grassland, but that, generally you, you come across a wetland area or something. Well, that's your like area. Uh, area. I doubt you'll have more than two or but three. Basically, you want to mark which butterfly you saw in which environment. That's it. Right. That's right. Exactly. And uh, with all these names, you know, I knew a monarch and a cabbage, <laughs> and that's about all I yeah. knew. <laughs> Sounds um, a but as time goes on, you know, you'll learn more and more every year. Uh, and like I say, you just if you can get a picture of it, send it in, and they'll they'll help you uh, identify it before you finish your report. Uh, so that is that one. And these are some books. Um, that I bought on uh, Amazon, uh, Butterflies of Indiana. Uh, I should have made a bibliography, I guess, for you. Butterflies of Michigan, you can look at those. Butterflies of the Midwest. And this is Peterson's butterfly guy. But, um, it really does help to, to have a, at least one book that you can look at. And The Butterflies of Indiana, of course, uh, I lean towards that one. Even the gal in Michigan that runs the program, she said my favorite book is, is that Butterflies of Indiana. She's right. from Michigan, and she has a Michigan book. But, uh, this is kind of nice and convenient yeah, to carry. It doesn't have them all in it, but it's got you know some of the basic ones in it. But if you want to write down the name of one of those books at the bottom of your paper, uh, or take a picture, yeah. That's all I got my insect books on the other Yeah. I took pictures. <laughs> I took a, I think that of the master garden.
Um, and she says, uh, give you some directions. When you do the username, make it easy for her to understand. Because she has to approve these. You send it in, say, I saw these seven butterflies. Mm -hmm. And then she looks at your report and she says, oh, this one doesn't even live in Indiana. <laughs> and she'll you know, take it off or, or uh, maybe this one's never been found in Allen County before, only the, the dunes. You know, what's it doing in Allen County? So, you know, if, if, uh, if she sees something, she'll email you back and say, can you send me a picture of that one yeah, you said you, you saw? Sure? <laughs> are you sure about that? And I, you know, my worst of my first year, I, I had a, a little small butterfly. I thought it was a skipper because there are the little guys that flip around in front of you. Right. And uh, uh, I sent her that. I said, what is this little goldish butterfly? And uh, I didn't, it didn't have feathery antenna or knobs. Well, I, I couldn't, I thought it had a knob at the end. It wasn't feathery. And I said, what is this? She just wrote one sentence back. She said, that's a law. <laughs> That's all she said. <laughs> so I learned my lesson there. I know what the fuck. Put two in your what place. What those little young guys are, are all butterflies. So anyway, she said, use your actual name uh, where it says real name. Uh, don't make up a name. Because then when she writes you, she'll know who you are. Uh, you're not to send photos to Pollen Base, uh, which is the world, the United States headquarters for this program. Oh, wow. Michigan is just a subset of that. But you do everything through Pollard, because they collect it all over the 50 states and record it all and do that. Um, she says it's good to get a dorsal and ventral view of the butterfly. I've never been able to do that. Right. I'm lucky to get a picture of the butterfly, let alone the bottom and the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then turn it over. Um, now it says when you set up your new survey route, um, you only have to do that one time because it's a new site. And then that's the same as we've talked about already. Um, and you'll use Google Maps to set that up. Um, and then we've talked about. Uh, the five meters or the 16 feet, you know, like a bubble. Um, no multitasking, walk at a slow rate. Oh yeah, you can take, if it's three minutes or more, record it as a break um, on your timesheet. I, when I get mined up, there's a bench down there along the Pullen Creek, and I just sit on that bench under a tree and rest, and then I head back. <laughs> um, don't record a species unless you're certain. Everyone counts, even if it's just an unknown. Um, yeah. Directions and you check in pollen based out of it's all through Michigan. Yeah, you have to wait for a moderator to prove your site. They'll contact you and they'll tell you when it's uploaded and then you can start adding your butterflies to it. So that's basically that one. Oh, was that one of these I had a whole bunch of addresses in the bottom. It must be this one. Yes. Yeah, this is the last one. Yeah. I don't want to walk out of this. Monarch, it looks like there's more observations of Monarch than there have been. Yeah. This is our last one. Uh, this Pollard base I was talking about was the National uh, Center for all the collecting data. Um, they launched a new program this year. Last year, it was really 
complicated and we couldn't always get everything through. So they started a whole new program now. And uh, that's these, the first part is talking about people that were in the program last year, how they can sign up and uh, convert to the new program. But down where the star is for new monitors, uh, respond with the name, email address you would like to create your new Polybase account. The Polybase folks will be adding new monitors manually. So that would be your first step um, to do that. Um, and then they've got questions for you. And notice it says to this email. If you look at the top, um, it says Butterfly Network at NatureCenter.org. That's Michigan, Kalamazoo. And they're the ones that will set this up for you. It's good. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just put that there. Um, so, then they ask three questions. What route will you be monitoring? If you need help with finding or creating a route, we will help you. So that's what I was saying. You know, I've talked to Rhonda Spink, that's that Butterfly Network at the Nature Center, and tell her, answer those three questions. And just say, if you're a new one, new member for 2023 out of Fort Wayne, uh, check this email address right here. So that's important. And then on the back side, uh, <coughs> that top part, those first 12, that's for people that were in it this year. Uh -huh. Skip over that. Just go to the very bottom. Okay. Uh, Butterfly ID by Jeffrey Belt. Now, some of you did this already. Jeffrey Belt, does that ring a bell? Look at the author yeah. of this book. Oh. <laughs> That's Jeffrey <Yeah>. Belt. <laughs> and he is really good. If you want to know all the little things about butterflies, you can. Unfortunately, if you. It'll take you forever to copy all those letters down. <laughs> mm. So if you let me know, I can send you a link to that. Okay. And then you can listen to Jeffrey Bell. Um, he's super excellent. Um, and it's, it's really neat. Then naturecenter.org, uh, that's the handbook. Michigan Butterfly Network Handbook. Okay. Um, this easy. goes through everything we've talked about, and I talked to you about habitat types. Um, <laughs> I think I counted like 14. Um, but if it's a developed area like a housing complex or a shopping center, those are all developed spaces. Barren, there's nothing there but rock and sand. <laughs> uh, forested uplands, there's three types. Um, grasslands, we talked about that. Shrubland, where it's full of little short trees. Uh, wetlands, is it woody or herbaceous? Uh, cultivated like a field, a pasture, even. Uh, an old field, savannah oak. Uh, those are all. What you'll have to decide which one is yours. Yeah. And uh, so that's here. How to survey. See, they, there's that bubble I was talking oh, yeah. about. He's walking at 16 feet each side, 16 feet above you. Uh, and how to do collecting, uh, entering your data in a pollard base. And this that's, is something we, we can go ahead and download. Yeah, I downloaded it. That's the only one I had. I, take, I think it yeah, was like 20 pages, so I didn't want to use my one, Butterfly Network at that. Nature Center. So when you go to the second oh, one there, it says Michigan Butterfly Network. Yeah, NatureCenter.org. There's the 
the site. You now you can type that in under yeah. the address. Yeah. Sure. And it should pop up. If it doesn't, just email me and I'll send you the original. But it should pop up. And then. Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah. I'll be emailing you, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, why can't you guys go like that in my yard? I think that's so many.